pirates, sea monsters, this little guy. Hey, little buddy. Hey, little cutie, aren't you? Ah! The ocean is a terrifying place, so stories of anyone surviving for multiple weeks or months or 438 days, pretty dang impressive. But it's almost more impressive when a couple of regular people survive against all odds. Like in 1940, when a United Kingdom supply ship was sailing across the Atlantic. But they weren't the only ones in the water. Open fire! <laughs> Three life rafts escaped the sinking ship, but one is shot down, and another one is too, leaving a single group of survivors to fend for themselves in the ocean. Just three weeks later, only two remained, Whittacombe and Tapscott. With little to no survival training, the two collected whatever rainwater they could get in small containers. To eat, the two guys scooped up seaweed that drifted by, as well as a fish that accidentally found its way into the raft. Ah, why'd you do that? It was undersized. But as weeks turned to months, rain showers and food got harder to come by. So the two guys turned to their equipment. Tapscott slurped up the little drop of alcohol bubbling around in his compass. Whittacombe decided to find something a little more cheesy. Unfortunately, his buddy's shoe was too tough for his vitamin depraved body. And Whittacombe's front teeth... Uh -uh. The two continued to drift, surviving on what little they could find. But every day, their chances of survival got a little slimmer. But then, in the distance, the two spotted an island. 70 days and 4,500 kilometers after being stranded, Tapscott and Whittacombe were finally rescued. The two weren't in great shape, but World War II was still in full frontal assault. So as soon as they'd recovered, they were sent straight back on cargo ships. Less than six months after being rescued, Whittacombe Ship would be shot down by yet another German battleship. Except this time... Nope, not again. He wouldn't survive. But there was another sailor on the ship who would. Poon Lim. I mean, he probably wasn't on that specific ship, but come on, that was a fire transition. There was only one problem. He couldn't swim. Oh! Off you go. Oh! After floating in the freezing ocean for hours, Poon Lim found the jackpot, a completely empty life raft. Opening the supplies, he was happy to see it was stocked with months worth of water, food, and massage oil. I have no idea what that was for. Massaging fish, maybe? Instead of waiting for fish to fly into his boat while eating his shoe, Poon Lim instantly got to work turning the raft's nails into fish hooks and copper wire into line. Instead of eating the disgusting ration packs, Poon Lim used them to catch fish, which he could immediately identify. Ah, Halicoreros by Vititis. Perfect. Poon Lim would use some fish as bait, eat some raw, and dry any dangerous ones in the sun. And he was eating pretty well. Boats did pass by Poon Lim, but unfortunately, they'd usually just laugh and keep going. Hey, look at this idiot! Aha! Imagine getting stranded! Ya no me enojo contigo, solo observo. It took 133 days and 1,200 kilometers of drifting before Lim was finally found by a fisherman and taken home. Although he was weak from sitting on a life raft for nearly half a year, with the way he was eating, he probably could have stayed out there the rest of his life. When he returned, word got out of his incredible survival story, and he became a public icon, living out the rest of his days traveling and sharing his story. But he wouldn't be out there as long as Jesus for Dana and his friends, who ran out of fuel in the middle of the ocean. Yep. They're still there. Now, if you look into any reports on this, they'll tell you it was just a shark fishing trip gone wrong. And I'm not accusing anyone of illegal activities. But if you go on a fishing trip without a single fishing rod in Mexico, where the majority of a very specific white powder is distributed, well, let's just say I don't think these guys are getting bored anytime soon. A search party was instantly sent out by the families and definitely not any Mexican drug lords trying to recover their product. But unfortunately, strong winds had blown them too far out. Oh no, they must be so scared. <laughs> With their problem-solving skills on full throttle, they instantly started survival crafting. They used the engine wire as fishing line and strategically placed tarps around the boat to collect rainwater. When they started catching less fish on the raft, they tied ropes around their waist and dived into the water to catch creatures with their bare hands. Still, it wasn't enough to keep them all alive. And after two months, two of the men would 
die of natural causes. The other three would remain drifting for over seven months before they'd finally be rescued by a tuna vessel. Oh no, tuna! No, 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 come back! They'd been stranded for a total of 298 days and traveled 8,800 kilometers before they finally returned to Mexico. Most people would have been welcomed back with open arms, but not these guys. Instead, for no good reason I can see, they were told off by their wives, the president, and their very, very mad distributor of fishing equipment. And so after nearly a full year of being stranded in the ocean thinking they were going to die, they felt so bad that they went straight back out to do more shark fishing, which is probably the last thing anyone expected. PTSD who, right? They would still hold the record for longest time stranded at sea, if in 2014, someone hadn't gone and beaten it. This is Jose, the current world record holder. In 2012, Jose and his first mate Ezekiel went fishing in what was meant to be a 30 hour trip. It started off great with the two catching half a ton of fresh fish to take back to shore. The only issue was, Jose had checked the storm forecast on the Apple weather app and had no idea what they were in for. Weighed down by fish and equipment, unable to control the small boat, Jose and Ezekiel were forced to throw all the fishing gear over, as well as everything they'd caught, and wait out the storm. It took five days for the crashing waves and thunder to die down, and the boat had taken a beating. The motor had been completely destroyed, and the only working electronic was a radio with just enough battery to make one single call. Jose desperately contacted his boss. What's that? You're stranded in the ocean with no food or equipment? Don't worry, fellas, I won't rest till you're found. Well, they're gone forever. Jose and Ezekiel were completely stranded, but they weren't giving up without a fight. They ate by grabbing creatures from the side of the boat with their bare hands. Birds, turtles, even a shark. To satisfy their thirst when they ran out of rainwater, they drank their own urine, as well as blood from the turtles that they had managed to catch. Even then, sustenance was hard to come by, and when the only thing entering your mouth was your own urine, it was easy to lose hope. Jose was... Well, I mean, look at him. He was born to do this. But Ezekiel was really struggling. He held out for four months, but eventually refused to eat, choosing to starve himself to death. Jose kept the corpse on the boat to talk to when he got lonely, but fearing talking to his dead buddy's corpse might make him go a little insane, he eventually threw it overboard. After drifting aimlessly for a total of 10,000 kilometers and 438 days, Jose spotted a small remote island and was finally rescued. He returned to his family where he developed an entirely reasonable fear of water and wrote a book about his experiences. Perfect. Jose is currently being accused of eating Ezekiel's body instead of throwing him into the ocean and is fighting a lawsuit against Ezekiel's family for one million dollars, as well as half the profits of his book. Jose insists he did not eat a single bit of him, but regardless, he still holds the world record for the longest time stranded in the ocean. There was an attempt to beat it a little more recently, however, although it's likely these two ladies got stranded on purpose. In 2017, Jennifer, Tasha, and their dog set out on an 18-day holiday voyage from Hawaii to Tahiti aboard their ship, the Sea Nymph. But on the very first night of their trip, the group was hit by a tropical cyclone that seemed to come completely out of nowhere, getting them caught in a huge storm. By the time it was over, the ship had gone through some major damage, including the now no longer functional motor. Over the course of six months, Jennifer and Tasha proceeded to drift helplessly through the ocean and would be hit by even rougher storms, attacked by psychotic tiger sharks and taken captive by a ship full of crazy people. Now, if all that sounds a little more intense than the other stories, that's because they made literally all of it up. The crazy people were actually just fishermen who were trying to rescue them. Tiger sharks don't attack boats, and apparently the cyclone that destroyed their ship never even existed in the first place. On top of all that, the two had a fully functional emergency radio beacon the entire time they were stranded. When asked why they didn't call anyone, they replied the emergency beacon is only for real emergencies. Which, to be fair, is probably the most honest answer they could have given. Why they did what they did is still unknown to this day, but unfortunately 
after the incident, the families of Jennifer and Tasha have publicly stated they never want to see either of them again. When the two were asked what was next, they said they were going to refurbish the recently recovered sea nymph and head back out to sea. Who knows, maybe this time they will beat the record. Speaking of records, do you know the longest time we've ever held a great white shark in captivity? I'll give you a hint, it's not very long. Click here to find out why.